Today I'm going to work on getting the AC side near my main panel wired up. I've been kind of stalling on this because I'm a little intimidated by the <laughs> by the main panel here. I do not have an external shutoff, so even once I turn off the main breaker, the main lugs will still be alive. So, and I have to knock out one of the knockouts at the top there, right next to where the main lugs are. So, like I said, I've been stalling. I do you already have a piece of plywood set up here and screwed to the wall? It's kind of fancy plywood for what I uh, am using it for, but I had it in my pile of wood that I hadn't used, and it's a lot cheaper to use an old piece of plywood than it is to buy a new piece of plywood these days. So. So we're going to have a very pretty piece of wood holding up my critical loads panel and the transfer switch. I've already marked where the top of the critical loads panel needs to be put to. Just need to measure out six inches from that knockout and then I can go about mounting the critical loads panel. This is an Eaton 125 amp load center or sub panel. You can see the part number there. My main panel is an Eaton panel as well. So I figured they should at least match on that wall. And of course, always take out your bonding screw between the neutral and the ground bus on any sub panel. I'm going to go ahead and feed this from the bottom. I'm gonna have a Reliance transfer switch feeding the power between the inverters and the main panel. That way I can flip back and forth from the grid to the inverter anytime I like if I need to do any kind of maintenance or upgrades. I'm going to go ahead and use the main lugs on this load center. I'm going to be using one gauge wire with a 100 amp breaker in my main panel to feed this panel and a 60 amp breaker on the transfer switch to provide power from the inverters. I already have the, one of the two inch knockouts knocked out and a eight inch long by two inch diameter pipe nipple that I'm going to use to run the wires between the main panel and the critical loads panel. That will mainly be used for running the wires for the circuits I'm going to move over into this panel. I marked six and a quarter inches from my main panel on my existing lines for the top of the load center. Then I put the load center up on the wall and marked where the center pivot point is and drove a screw in so that I can go ahead and hang it and get leveled out and get it mounted. I double check my distances and I appear to be on target here. Now I'm going to level it out and get it fastened to the wall permanently. She is up and level and permanently mounted, hopefully. <laughs> this is my Reliance transfer switch. 100 amps for the main panel and 60 amps for the inverter side. This way I can put the critical loads panel on the grid anytime I need to do maintenance or upgrades to the inverter side. It's actually the outside model because I found a good deal on it on Amazon, but that's the part number. If you can get the inside only model, I would recommend it, but I am cheap so this will work for me. Well, I made a mistake unfortunately. I thought this was 2 inch, but it is clearly not. So I'm going to have to use my other special handy dandy tool to make the hole bigger. This is a hydraulic knockout tool. It uses a hydraulic cylinder and these dies to make larger holes or large holes in sheet metal. So I'm going to try to use this to make that hole larger. I have never used this tool before, but I'm glad I bought it because, like I said before, it's nice to have tools to make up for when you make mistakes. If you've never seen one of these used before, it uses these metal dies to enlarge the hole by using the hydraulic cylinder there 
to use the cutting teeth of the die to make the hole larger using that hydraulic hand pump there. I have learned an important thing about this tool. It has limited stroke and the short side goes in the tool, the long side goes in the die. I figured this out after I got this far and had to unscrew that tool from this side and flip it around so that I could continue making the hole. So once again, learn from my mistakes, don't make the same ones I do. Now we have bigger hole. Alright, I've knocked out the bottom knockout of the critical loads panel. I'm going to go ahead and suspend the transfer switch from that pipe nipple here and then we'll get it level out and leveled out and mounted. I may have cut the hole a little bit too far back in the box. If you do this, make sure that you measure how far out from the edge of your panel the hole is so that you don't get too close to the wall like I think I probably have. Now well, she's dangling. So I'm going to go ahead and get her leveled out and screwed to the wall. When you do this, make sure you leave yourself enough threads to get your anti-short bushings on because you will want to use those for pipe nipples of this size. Alright, got her all mounted. Got the lock rings tight and my bushings on. Secure to the wall. Next up, the fun part connecting it to the main panel. If you are thinking about doing this, make sure that you do a lot of research before even considering opening the main panel. If you do not feel comfortable opening the main panel or do not have the knowledge to open the main, open the main panel safely, hire an electrician to do it for you. Here's my main panel with the cover taken off. If you're not familiar, that's the main breaker. Those two wires are leg one and leg two of the power coming from the pole. In my case, they are always hot because I do not have an external disconnect. So even if I turn off that main breaker, those lugs are still hot. So no matter what you do, unless you can turn off the power completely to the panel, you'd be very, very careful of those two lugs. Over here is the neutral lug. Of course, we have the neutral and ground shared buses on the left and on the right. This panel replaced an old fuse box from the late 50s, right before I moved in. I was not the one who hired the electrician, but if your electrician leaves things like that dangling there, you may want to find a different electrician. So I need to take out that knockout. I marked which one I need to remove here. So I gotta squeeze my hands in there and avoid going anywhere near those. Another note on safety is, is that I am wearing safety glasses currently and if you're messing with this stuff you should be too. These gloves are nice to keep your hands from getting cut up on sharp edges of sheet metal. They are not rated for electricity. These will not save you if you touch something you shouldn't. So keep that in mind. So be careful. And again, if you don't feel comfortable touching this stuff, or you don't know how, hire an electrician. Second safety note, probably don't wear Crocs when you're working on this. I guess you could have worse shoes on than these, but yeah, not electrically rated. I am standing on a rubber pad just because I'm paranoid. That's probably not going to save me either. One of the things you have to worry about here is touching two things at once because the panel itself, the metal case of the panel, is grounded and linked to the neutral buses. So if you touch something that is hot while touching any part of the case, you become the conductor to the neutral and ground. So you will get zapped. So if you can use one hand while working in these things and keep your other hand at your side, at least if you get zapped, it'll only go through your arm, through your body, and through one foot, rather than going across your heart. Alright, got the knockout knocked out. 
These larger knockouts are kind of a pain in the neck, just to warn you. Make sure you have a decent set of lemons pliers, otherwise you'll not have much fun with this. Got that done. Got it tightened down. Bushings on both sides. It's a little unnerving because when I was tapping those lock rings tight, stuff kept falling down from the top. It's like chunks of little plastic left over from the last electrician who shoved those wires to the bushings. So little pieces of gray plastic were falling down on me. That was great. Fun stuff. Now I have to set this up here. This is a little trickier because I couldn't get them at the same height as you can see. So I'm going to use some FMC flex conduit to complete this link up. This is where the power from the main panel will go into the transfer switch. That's its primary job is just for that. So you didn't want to have to run wire all the way up there and all the way there and all the way back down again. So I figured another piece of conduit would be a better solution for this. I know I've been harping on safety this video a lot, but while I'm harping on safety, I of course go ahead and decide to screw this connector into the end of this piece of uh, flex here. Forgetting that very sharp piece of metal was there and I had not put on my gloves. So now I am wounded. It's already leaking through because of it's been bleeding for over half an hour now. There is a trail of blood all the way through the basement and up to the bathroom right now. So you don't need to get fancy Klein gloves. These aren't that expensive. They're like 12 bucks for two pair on Amazon, and like 10 bucks for two pair at Home Depot. But no matter what you do, you should get some kind of gloves that have some kind of cut resistance so that you don't bleed all over your floor like this idiot. But honestly, I've decided what I'm going to do is just delete this and I'm going to use just a plain chase nipple and use it to connect these two boxes together, metal to metal. And that should move this high enough to be able to go straight across between the two panels using just plain a rigid steel conduit connector. And I'm back at it again. I uh, spent all weekend installing a heat pump at a friend's house, so didn't get much done this weekend until now. I did get the transfer switch taken off the wall. I used the hydraulic punch tool to punch that hole out from an inch and a half to two inches for that rigid conduit there. Now I'm going to use a conduit chase nipple to mount this box to the critical loads panel. Got everything remounted here. Still need to tighten down some lock rings. So hopefully that'll be a little bit level, more level on the top here once I tighten down the lock rings. But I did manage to get the boxes tied together with a conduit chase nipple here. And we went up to two inch here, I figured may as well. So I should have plenty of capacity for wires between all these different boxes. Well, I've completed mounting the boxes on the conduit finally. I didn't manage to get the top one quite level. Kind of irritating my OCD a bit, but I will have to deal with it. The rest of it looks okay. I did have to use a coupler here because I couldn't get a length of rigid conduit that was the appropriate length for this connection, but it looks fine. But I have it all together, all the bushings are in, all the lock rings are tight. So the next step is going to be actually doing wiring. Amazing, right? That will be in another video. I think I'm going to call it quits on this video for now. Thanks for watching. And don't zap your dingus.